to be one of those people that like over pronounces foreign languages. I just always have to restrain myself from saying things. But have you seen those clips of Jada De Laurentiis where she's like, Hello, my name is Jada, and today I'm going to put some parmigiano on the lasagna. We get it, you're Italian, your last name is De Laurentiis, it's gonna be okay. <laughs> and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Nada. I feel like I never introduced myself at the beginning of these things, so hopefully I can start making that a tradition because I know that there are probably a lot of people who are like, how the fuck do you pronounce that name in this channel? How do you do it? Uh, today's video is going to be a let's talk new book releases slash anti-haul. As I have said before on this channel, I really enjoy watching beauty YouTube. It's like one of my favorite sides of YouTube. I was definitely sucked in in that whole 2016-2017 beauty YouTube boom that happened. And one of the types of videos that I love to watch on beauty YouTube are videos of people talking about new makeup releases, anti-haul videos, kind of saying, this is a new makeup that's coming out, this is what I want to buy, this is what I don't want to buy, or I hate all of this, let's destroy consumerism. I wanted to do that kind of video, but with books. I'm sure that there are a bunch of other creators on booktube who have done this before and if I find any that I really enjoy I will link them down below so that you guys can check those videos out too. But yeah, today I just wanted to go through the new book releases for this spring and say whether I'm interested in them, whether I'm not interested in them, and just generally what I think about them. I just, I impulse buy books all the time. And so I was thinking that like looking at new book releases I would be more susceptible to be interested in things and to kind of like want to like stop myself from buying them or analyze why I want to buy them. So yeah. I think I said this at the beginning of this video, but I'm refilming this because I filmed this a couple of weeks ago and it was supposed to come out, but then I looked at all of the footage and it was completely out of focus. And so we're back here. Hopefully I can look at these books with fresh eyes again. Have, I don't know. I haven't looked at these books in a while, so hopefully. I like to look at the list on BuzzFeed, um, and I think it's just because they to me feel like the most comprehensive compilations of books that are coming out whereas like I wasn't really able to find any other like there's no trend mood for books there probably should be but there isn't and if there is I don't know how to find it if you know where it is leave a comment down below and tell me 75 books to add to your 2021 TBR list I'm going to try and focus mainly on books that are being released March, April, May time so that they're kind of fresher and not stuff that like people have seen a lot and already talked to death. I think I'll start here. The Committed by Viet Thanh Nguyen, um, which came out March 2nd. He won the Pulitzer with his 2015 novel The Sympathizer. I did not read that one, um, but I did read some stories out of his short story collection for an Asian American literature class that I took in college. So this says, oh, it's, so it's from, it's from the same, like, it's this, it's the same main character as the person from The Sympathizer, I guess. So about, a, so that book was about a North Vietnamese spy embedded in a South Vietnamese platoon during the Vietnam War. And it says this one, in this one, our Rai double agent has just arrived in Paris as a refugee. I'm intrigued. I think um, there's a lot of, not there's a lot of discourse, but I think I've heard a lot of discourse about the Vietnam War and I'm intrigued just to see how he portrays a character that is North Vietnamese and was like a North Vietnamese spy. I know he was born in Vietnam. I don't know if it was North. He, yeah, he's from South Vietnam. So who like was a North Vietnamese spy in the war and 
now has to leave the country and like be is like refugeed into a foreign nation especially France which France France's colonial history of Vietnam is a lot of the reason why the Vietnam War happened in the first place so this seems interesting I think I, this is a book that I would get from the library I don't think that I would purchase it myself um but I would read it definitely okay so this next one is called Cosmog Cosmogony by Lucy Ives came out March 9th and it is a collection of short stories. She wrote this book called Louder Milk which my friend tried to read and she said it was absolutely ridiculous so I'm intrigued to see what this is about. Um, so it says her debut short story collection takes on daily absurdities and the subtle supernatural playing with the format as she weaves in Wikipedia entries, text messages, and science equations. That's not the most appealing thing to me. It sounds a little dry, but eh, I do enjoy short story collections. No, I, I, I probably won't buy it though. Next we have The Arsonist City by Hawa Alyan. Uh, after Idris Nasser's father dies, he becomes a patriarch of his far flung of his large and far flung family. When he decides to sell the family home in Beirut, the rest of the family flock from their new homes in Brooklyn, Austin, and California to change his mind. Once they're all there, secrets and tensions erupt. Dead Dad is not for me, but I think it would be an interesting portrait about family and history. It's a, it says it's bringing up themes of home, history, identity. I feel like it would be an interesting portrayal of that. The last time I filmed this video, this next book, I was so excited by because I love this author. Um, this is A Little Devil in America, Notes in Praise of Black Performance by Hanif Abdurraqib. He shouted out my friend's band on Twitter and I'm going to like put the tweet that he tweeted at them in this video is so exciting for me because I've been following him for a really long time at that point and he shouted out her band. Yes, this is about Hanif Abdurraqib. So this book came, comes out, so March 30th, um, it says Hanif Abdurraqib turns his eye in this series of essays to black cultural figures from Whitney Houston to Josephine Baker and their remarkable abilities. Definitely, definitely, definitely going to buy this. I love him. I really enjoy his writing. I really enjoy his presence on Twitter. And I love essay collections, especially about strong black people. So that one is going on the list. Um, okay, so next we have Pieces by Helenoya Yemi, which is coming out on April 6th. It says, famous for turning fairy tales into dark fables about race and gender, Helen Oyeyemi's latest fantastical novel centers on a newly married couple who are setting out on their honeymoon, but their train ride to the honeymoon of their dreams is not as straightforward as it would seem. I read somewhere that this is like a fantastical Orient Express train ride or something like that. So I think this is interesting. I don't think that I would purchase it but I am intrigued by it. Next we have An Apprenticeship or The Book of Pleasures by Clarice Lispector translated by Stephen Tobler which is coming out on April 6th. Clarice Lispector is a Brazilian novelist who passed away years and years and years ago but I read some of her short stories for my Brazilian literature class that I took a couple of years ago and it was really she's like super weird and cerebral and like very much tied up in the existentialism philosophy movement so this an apprenticeship it says an apprenticeship is an attempt to understand human connection and its limits following a woman on her earnest journey out of solitude and in search of love and I feel like this really is in keeping with a lot of the themes that Lispector explores in all of her other stories. This is a book that I would again probably read if I got it from the library but I don't think that I feel the need to own it. Okay next. Oh, interesting. So there is a new Haruki Murakami book. It's called First Person Singular. It's translated by Philip Gabriel and it comes out on April 6th as well. So, oh, it's a short story collection. Eight new stories all told from a narrator speaking in the first person which feel dreamy and pseudo autobiographical at times on topics ranging from music to baseball to nostalgia. 
I read one of his short stories when I was in college and I really liked it, but I don't remember what it was called or what it was about. I don't know that I have the stamina to read an entire Haruki Murakami book. Um, the only one that I know about is IQ84 and oh boy, she's long. I'm not super interested in that, but if you, if you're like a Murakami head, there's that for you. Okay, so next we have another book by somebody that I follow on Dolita. Um, this is Love in Color, Mythical Tales from Around the World, retold by Bully Babalola. Comes out April 13th. It is a collection of reimagined love stories from history and myth. And she says that it is a step towards decolonizing tropes of love. I'm already planning on buying this like I am planning on buying the Hanif Abdurraqib book. I just think it's really, I don't know, I think she's hilarious on Twitter. I love her Twitter presence and she started tweeting about the process of writing the book for her and like what the ethos behind it was and I was like, oh that sounds actually really interesting. And I also love the cover so definitely gonna purchase that, super into it. Oh okay, this is one that I was interested in. It is Crying in H Mart by Michelle Zauner comes out April 20th, three days before my birthday. It says her memoir expands on an essay she published of the same name in The New Yorker and its themes of family, grief, and heritage, exploring her relationship with her Korean identity through stories of growing up as one of very few Asian Americans in Eugene, Oregon, spending time in Seoul with her mother and grandmother and processing her mother's terminal cancer. I I've said this many times in this video, but dead parents, I can't do that as a theme in books. I wish everybody who writes about that, and it is a lot of people who write about that, the best with their novels, short stories, memoirs, pursuits, love you. I have to abstain because I have undigested, unprocessed trauma around my own parents my own father's terminal cancer diagnosis so that's great for Michelle Zauner I might even buy a copy of it and gift it to a friend just so I can support I don't know why I'm so into this um book but I think it's because I love H Mart H Mart is like god tier grocery store oh it's amazing I love it oh the kimbap the kimbap y'all have fun if you want to read that um I have to unfortunately have to abstain. So next we have Hot Stew by Fiona Mosley which also comes out on April 20th and it sales it takes place in London Soho where a young millionaire intent on converting an old building into luxury condos finds out the hard way that its tenants, specifically two sex workers whose brothel is based in the building, won't leave without a fight. Mm, eh, it's not for me. Okay, next we have Whereabouts by Jhumpa Lahiri, which comes out on April 27th. I think this is the novel that she wrote in Italian, just because she could. Um, and it says, Whereabouts centers on one woman over the course of a year as she navigates the dueling desires to form real connections and preserve her independence. That doesn't tell me anything about the plot. Um, I have conflicting feelings about Jhumpa Lahiri because I, I read one of her short story collections when I was in high school and I did not like it. I was not into it at all. And then I read another one when I was in college and I was like, wait, this is amazing. So I don't know how I feel about her. I, yeah, I watched the movie for her book, The Namesake, and that movie was amazing. And I want to read the book, The Namesake, now, just because of how much I enjoyed that movie. So conflicting feelings about Jhumpa Lahiri. Don't think I will buy that book, but it exists if you would like to. Okay, so this next one is called White Magic by Elisa Ushuta. It comes out on April 27th. It says, Elisa Ushuta, a member of the Cowlitz Indian tribe, tackles the appropriation and whitewashing of native spirituality in mainstream witchcraft trends in this memoir of essays, writing about her experiences of abuse, addiction, and mental illness, she recounts her ro the role of her ancestral magic in her own survival and journey to becoming a witch. Love a good witch, love an own voices, own voices story about a Native American person, and I am actually really interested in the ways in which Native 
American spirituality and really indigenous spirituality like throughout the world like indigenous to people of different parts of the world has been appropriated by colonizers in those parts of the world and kind of like bastardized and re like chewed up and spit out and remixed into the um like wider mainstream spirituality movement so I think I will actually buy this one if I see it somewhere because I'm very interested in that. Okay, so next we have Pop Song Adventures in Art and Intimacy by Larissa Pham. Larissa Pham's debut nonfiction pop song is a meditation on falling in and out of love with people, places, art, and ideas, drawing on her personal experience and broad cultural fluency to explore how and why we make various connections in search for meaning. Okay, that's kind of like, that's, this is kind of exactly my like wheelhouse. I love cultural criticism and I myself think a lot about and write a lot about like things that I like, like media that I enjoy, not as a part of my personality, but just because I'm like, like it says in the summary, I'm interested in the ways in which we and why we identify with the media that we consume. So this is another one that I think I will buy. <gasps> Ooh, Alison Bechdel. Okay, sorry, I got distracted. Okay, it says The Secret to Superhuman Strength by Alison Bechdel um, of the eponymous Bechdel Test. A legend of the graphic memoir scene, Alison Bechdel moves away from family strife and instead analyzes her lifelong obsession with various fitness fads. Is she a Virgo? That's my only question. Yep. Right there. I said you're obsessed with various fitness fads because you're a Virgo, Allison. Yeah, I'm intrigued by this. I might I'm dating a Virgo and they love graphic novels, so I might get this for them cuz I feel like that would be interesting to them. Oh, this is interesting. Secrets of Happiness by Joan Silver out May 4th. It says her new novel follows a man harboring a secret. He's leading two lives, part of two families, and the impact of his deception radiates far beyond him. I love a book about family drama. I read Little Fires Everywhere and I ate that shit up like it was candy. It was delicious. So I will probably, and I really like the cover of this book. I'll like put it up here. I, I'm probably gonna put them all up so I can honestly cut this out, but I really like the cover of this book. Ooh, she's pretty. I love gold, so I'll probably buy this, honestly, if the, like, occasion presents itself. We have Second Place by Rachel Cusk, also out May 4th. It centers around a middle-aged woman called M who lives with her second husband in a remote town near a marsh. When a famous artist and his young girlfriend come to stay at her guest cottage and M's daughter and her unemployed boyfriend show up as well, her sense of order is upended. Mm, I don't care about this. I'm not super interested in it unless I hear that there's a gay plot twist somewhere. Then probably I'll read it, but mm. oh, this is in this is interesting to me. Okay, so it says Punch Me Up to the Gods by Brian Broom out May 18th. It says built around Gwendolyn Brooks's iconic poem, We Real Cool, Brian Broom's memoir of essays is an examination of black masculinity, drawing on his experience as a young boy who crushed on other boys before growing into a man, perpetually navigating his outsider status. I I would like to understand like or like read about and understand black masculinity from the perspective of someone who lives that experience so this is another one that i think that i would buy if i encountered it in the wild if the the opportunity presented itself to me so to speak i just was thinking like i want to end on a good one. Oh my god there's so many interesting ones so I'm gonna skip around a little bit with the next few. So I'm gonna start with Dear Santhuran by Akwekwe Amezi, which comes out on June 8th. Um, love them. I'm really intrigued with them. I think it's hilarious that they're beefing with Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie, or that Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie is beefing with them. Um, and I want to support them in everything that they do because I just think that that's so funny and stupid. This is... A work of nonfiction, a collection of letters written to friends and family members about their evolving identity. I'm super interested in this because I, I don't think I'm the only person who 
entered lockdown without gender feelings and exited lo lockdown with a lot of gender feelings. So, intrigued by this book. Might read it. Might buy it. Might love it. Let's see where this takes us a quick way. Um, a quick A? A quick A? A quick A and a Z. I've been saying their name wrong this entire time. That's embarrassing. Okay, and we're going to end on, for me, a very high note because it's another person that I follow on Twitter. And I love her so much. I, just, I really just love her Twitter. I, I, as you can tell, I spend a lot of time on Twitter. But this is Somebody's Daughter by Ashley Seaford. I also think that she's an amazing writer. I've read some of her profiles of people and they're just so considered and nuanced and like, ugh, I really enjoy her. This comes out on June 1st and it is a memoir which chronicles her complicated relationship with her father who was imprisoned for rape when Ford was just six months old and released right before her 30th birthday in 2017. If the essays she has written about her father are any indication, expect a deeply moving, nuanced story. Oh wow, I want to cry for some reason. That's really emotional. And I was reading her tweets about like her relationship with her father and how weird it was for her that he was finally getting out of jail and what it was going to be like for her that he was finally that he was in her life again and so yeah I definitely want to buy this definitely want to support her story support one of the writers that I really enjoyed okay so that is my video talking about new book releases for spring 2021 um that was really fun to just kind of like scroll through books that are coming out and see what I'm interested in, what I'm not interested in. And also now I have a list of books to buy before I just go and impulse buy a bunch of books at Barnes Noble. So these are ones that if I see them, I will, I will be buying them with an intention rather than with a lack of um, control over myself and my debit card. I think that's all I have to say about this. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked anything that I said or just my face, I, my name is Neda, as I said at the beginning, and I make videos about books, movies, TV shows, really anything that I wanna talk about on this channel. And if you're interested in that, you can subscribe to get more videos from me. If you liked this video, give it a like. And yeah, I hope you guys have a great rest of your whatever the fuck day this is. Thank you.